Am I the only one that thinks that's really impressive? Morning! Feels about 10 o'clock at night because I've been on the phone to the Animal Plant Health Agency over a discrepancy on a box that I didn't tick on a bit of paperwork. 28 minutes. I was on the phone. The, part, the other important part of the form is section 5 when you really everything you need then to do. Lovely. And as soon as we get it, we'll um, Sounds really we'll straightforward. So he, the other land that you've told me about, what I'll do is, as I say, as soon as we, we, as soon as we write down to you to confirm it's done, if you, um, when you do get the form, obviously we've, we've covered a lot of ground this morning. If it goes out of your head, what? Because it is at the end of, at the end of the day, as I was, I was always told, it's in sequence numbers two to four three. A mile is one thousand six hundred ninety-three meters. So obviously, where we it's just a movement license as far as I know. Lovely. Thanks very much. Good morning, Mr. Woodhead. Take care, sir. Bye. <laughs> he called me good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, Mr. Woodhead. I was just on the phone to him for 28 minutes. No wonder I can never get hold of him. 28 minutes. Anywho, this morning, got a funny story for you all. We've got a pretty large loan to pay back this April. So I've set a few things aside. A big lump of coal use. Well, pretty big for us. There's just over a hundred of them. They're all shapes and sizes as you can imagine but they should go a long way to paying off a fair lump of this loan so in my back pocket i thought we're sweet we've got them on all these apples at the minute right in their teeth away nicely but the grass is growing like mad so they're grazing it all up beautiful job got the turnips to go on in december three months of them we'll cash them in in march the prices usually pick right up in march we'll be away well, let me tell you about my little dorper tup. <sighs> my dorper ram smashed through two fences to get in with the cull use, and he's tupped probably 40 of them. I haven't actually looked, I'm just getting them in now to have a look. I was so mad, I'm so mad of him, he's actually in the naughty shed right now. That's about the only place I've got him locked away where he can't get to anything. Really frustrating, but that's just the way it is. So, I thought I'd quickly tell you about the dorper and why we've got him. You bad boy. So if you've all watched my YouTubes, then you'll understand, hopefully, why we breed the lambs we do, why we don't hold any females back, why we, we kill all our lambs and sell them. I hope that's all made sense. But going forward, we're looking at retaining females, um, or at least some, to try and sort of build up a younger flock behind of everything that we're doing. Now, wool. Wool is... A funny old job. I could talk about wool until the cows come home. Benefits of it, why we should value it a lot more, but sadly, we don't. Wool has been costing farmers money for a long time. We've never broken even shearing um, sheep. So looking at the future and going into breeding females, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying it's what everyone should do, but we should at least have a look at shedding sheep. Now, personally, I do think the wool industry is gonna bounce back and I think people are gonna start valuing it a lot more when we just move away from plastics and synthetics and try and use wool a lot more. I fully believe that's gonna happen, but when? Because right now it's costing us a lot of money. If you're not looking at these sort of things, then there's a number of sheep that shed wool, and uh, one of them is a Dorpa. A Dorpa is a South African breed. I looked and thought, they literally get fat on anything. Surely we can fatten them here. So that's not a bad thing. They look a bit different which I like. I like sheep that look a bit different. We like to try a bit of everything. I didn't go out and buy the most expensive dorper you could buy, but I bought the most expensive one we could afford. And we ended up buying a ram lamb. Um, like I said, he wouldn't be the best. He wasn't the best the breeder had. He was just in our budget. He did fully shed, happy with that. He hasn't got wormy or anything like that. He bred a lot of lambs. He tapped a lot of ewes. We probably had 50 or 60 lambs out of him. But one thing was that he threw all black lambs, all of them were exactly the same, completely jet black. He lambed easy, I don't think we pulled a single dorper lamb out, apart from some triplets that were tangled up, um, but we, we've still got one of them, I'll show you in a minute maybe. They were all lively as anything. I was so impressed at how quickly they got up to feed from their mothers, so that was all great. But you know how bad the drought was in the summer here? We were looking at offloading lambs, and I was looking at all these dorper lambs thinking, who's gonna buy these? because they look funny. You know, unfortunately they're a bit different and that wipes the value off them. I think their lambs are probably worth a little bit less than the white lambs would be, because that's just what the market wants. So this year I haven't really used him very much. I've only put him with half a dozen sheep, keep him busy. Obviously that wasn't enough for him, so he's got in with the coal use. But that's my reasoning behind the Dorpa. We thought we'd try him. But anyway, in about 12 hours, he seems to have tapped about 40%. So that ain't bad going, is it? 
Indy, come inside now, come on. Out there, come on. Get a drink. Do you want a drink? They don't look 100 there, does it? How long do we think it's going to take that sheep to jump out? I reckon like 10 seconds. She don't usually last long in a pen. Once I've sorted the coal use out, what I want to do is push them in there because all these trees are being... What's the word? Top? It's not top, is it? Pruned. All the trees are being pruned. They haven't been done for a long time, so it's big sort of piles of that. So they're going to get a tractor in there and push all that up, so they're going to... They're going to wreck my grass. So I just want to graze it off because why not? Why would we ruin that? So here they are. I use. Um, luckily, the door pad still had a bit of orange rattle on him, so you can just see who he's copped. You see, it's quite, quite a few of them. See what I mean? Well, he's done a thorough job. I'll give him that. Autumn has been so kind to us. Like after the sun we had. I mean, look at this farm now. You wouldn't believe it's the same place. Look how green. That grass is. And it's meant that these ewes have got a lot fitter than they would normally be. Can't be a bad thing. Can't be a bad thing at all. But yeah, now they're in the lamb. Great. And she's out. Go back in. Look at the height of that gate. Doesn't care one bit. So here we have them. Ta-da! These are majority all ewes that we bred from last year. All I'm doing is just checking their feet and just checking their body condition as well. Um, they're actually in fantastic nick. A few of the mules are a little bit leaner, but even like this black ewe here has been so good to me. Um, looks quite lean, but she's actually really well fleshed. I actually prefer fattening coal ewes to lambs. I find them a lot easier. When you first get started, you can buy, you, well, it was a bit easier, but you can buy coal ewes for about 20 quid cheaper than lambs. So it gave me that sort of, the, to be honest, the profit margin is probably exactly the same as there is between coal ewes and lambs, but you can buy them a little bit cheaper. They eat a bit more probably. Um, definitely they definitely eat a little bit more but i just found them easier you can um you can fatten a coal you fairly easy they're 20 quid cheaper to buy what's not the like also you can usually get them away with them a little bit leaner because the market for these is they don't want them too fat they moan just as much if they're too fat as if they're too thin so a nice fresh dew like that she's absolutely perfect That is the last of them done, so hopefully I'll just go and graze that field off now, give them a couple of weeks, and then we'll probably look at starting to try and offload some, some of the fit ones. Hopefully the price is up. Um, it's not gonna be where it probably will be in March, but sometimes these things are a blessing in disguise, so you never ever know. This is a Dorper lamb. Fairly typical, to be honest. This was out of Dale's U. She was actually a triplet, we reared her on the bottle with the goats and now she thinks she's a goat and if you think i'm joking i am not if you try and separate these two the one that's got a bad leg and that lamb they will literally scream until they get put back together but best friends funny enough they all had that little white spot on the top of their heads as well dear friends it's now the next day and you're not going to believe what i'm about to show you just out of my colliers i put out in this orchard yesterday there they all are there they all are Look who that is. Look. That's right, he's done it again. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And press the bell.